congratulations on the film, Natalie. I, I uh, know that you had worked with the Duplass brothers on Room 104, you were in it, you directed a couple of episodes. So I wanted to know how you and Mark actually connected to bring this story um, to life. Well, you know, I don't know if you um, know or remember, but there was a pandemic happening um, <laughs> uh, that's still happening right now. Um, but at the beginning stages of it, um, you know, I, I would say sometime sometime after we knew that it wasn't going to be just a couple of months. I think everybody around March was like, oh, OK, a month or two. This is crazy. And then around May, when it started to become very real and very uncertain and very uh, sad and, and just scary, yeah. um, I think Mark and I had a conversation and he said to me, hey, do you speak Spanish? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I have an idea. And um, and so he he pitched me the idea for just the general idea about, a, you know, a, um, a Spanish teacher and her student mm -hmm. and um, and if there was a story in there about how they might connect. And um, and then we we wrote it together and um, and then shot it together. And, and by, from the time we came up with the idea to the time we finished shooting was about uh, four weeks, which wow. was crazy. Uh, but but yeah, that's that's how it happened. Yeah, and then of course, you know, the whole relationship is just through the screen. And obviously, as you say, I mean, we've been doing this for a year, you know, this is how we're communicating. Yeah. Do you think that after having done this film and now living this through communicating, can you really, really connect with somebody, do you think this way? Because boy, do I, we ever see it in your film. Yeah, I think, you know, um, I think it's interesting because there's a performative aspect to to Zoom, uh, just as there is a performative aspect to wearing a mask. You have to exaggerate when you're smiling or 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 laughing or something, just to make sure that you, the other person understands or hears you, right? And there's that's why it's so tiring at the end of the day after a bunch of Zoom meetings or 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 whatever, because you're just tired of making excess faces so that you are understood but it's it's how we communicate as humans and and um it you know it's very different than being in person people can tell a lot more about your general body language than just you know the top half of you that they're seeing and and so you have to communicate a lot more um physically and, and it becomes exhaustive so I think it is possible to connect, especially if it's the only way to connect. I mean, there, you know, we've heard of long distance relationships that start long distance and, and those are, you know, used to only be by phone, if, if at all, sometimes even just by letters, you know? And so, of course, this is the modern way to connect, especially in a world where, I mean, in, in language lessons, it, it we'd never mention the pandemic because I figured we might be tired of it at, at immediately after. So we wanted the movie to feel uh, more evergreen, but they are in different countries. And so, um that's why you know they can connect this way and i think i think it is possible yeah um tell me a little bit of a like obviously you directed this and you're now getting i, I love seeing you on camera and i'm so glad that you're not giving that up because you're so you're just so vivacious on camera i love seeing your face and what you do in all of your roles Thank but you. to have to direct this and then you like you say four weeks it's said and done and everything how how challenging was it because you're not, you know, you and uh, and and Mark were not in the same room. Obviously, you're not next to each other. So, what kind of challenges did you face directing this film? It was extremely challenging, um, uh, particularly because at the time we were the only production that I had heard of that was trying to film anything at all, and so we had to kind of invent an entire new way to do it. Nobody, nobody had done it. We had these rigs that we set up on like ikea cutting boards of the cameras and computers and sound um you know i did my own like makeup hair wardrobe set design lighting um uh hair everything for the whole movie and uh, you know we we it was definitely um a totally different experimental experience and and it was difficult it was also it's also somewhat difficult to edit because it was a new way of filming um and uh but it was ultimately extremely rewarding and and something that Mark, you know, always inspires me to do, which is just to like push past the ordinary and push past the things that you're comfortable with, because that, you, you know, you might fall into a trap that's terrible, but you also might find something really special and unique. And I think um, luckily, I think that's what ended up happening. Yeah, I absolutely loved their relationship and how it developed. And obviously, I don't want to give anything away. 
but I just felt so drawn into these two characters. Um, you know, I, you must have too. You must have fallen in love with both of them. <laughs> I, I did. I did. I definitely did. I mean, we we actually when we went about writing the script, we wrote we went off on our own and we wrote descriptions of these two characters first before we wrote anything, just what came to us, who we wanted to play, what, what we felt inspired by. And then we decided how do we collide these two people? Um, and so, yeah, I ended up really loving loving both of the characters and also um, just the fact that there's not a I can't think of a single movie about platonic male female friendship uh, and and I, I didn't even notice that at the time I only noticed it after we made it but it is so I mean any friendship is is just as good fodder as much fodder for a, a rom com or any kind of story as sure. as a romantic relationship and and friendships can be harder to navigate because there's not the same milestones that you have in in traditional relationships you like when's the first time you say I love you to a friend when's the first time you go you know stay with them all night when's the first time they see you drunk it's it, it's all these d different little intricacies of friendship that were really really fun to explore yeah and um the house no yeah. was that Mark's house because oh my goodness he's doing yeah. really well then if it is <laughs> but it was absolutely that is a huge character in this it, it is uh it was his house it's no longer his house but it, it was his house yeah I want to move in. <laughs> oh my God. It was like a resort. Yeah. It was gorgeous. It's very um, beautiful. But, yeah. Well, no wonder he felt so at home there because it yeah. really felt, you know, that I had a, I, as I'm watching it, I'm going, he has to live there. He must be <laughs> living there. Yeah. It was beautiful. Now I got a question for you because you, you, you've done comedy, you've done drama, same with Mark, but my theory is why do funny people make such great dramatic actors? You know, I, I, I often wonder the same thing. And I think it's because in order to be really connected to comedy, it, it you can't be trying to be funny. It, it is, it is and, and so much of comedy comes from a really tragic place. And so you, you have to be vulnerable enough to, to, to do comedy. And that makes for, for good dramatic acting for, for a lot of people. And also it's, you know, I guess it can be unexpected for the viewer, right? To see somebody like Jim Carrey doing something like Eternal Sunshine, which is like one of my favorite movies and one of my favorite performances, but he is already so, he's already so willing to put himself out there as a, as an actor in comedic movies and just be vulnerable and, and let himself be judged that it doesn't, I don't think it's as hard of a transition to drama because it, it, you're already used to doing that. Yeah. Um, who has been your mentor over the over the years who you've worked with in terms of who you learned the most about direction from? You know, I wish I had a mentor. I don't have one. Um, I, 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 I did write to Mel Brooks a few times a long time ago, begging him to be my mentor and he did not respond. He's probably oh. busy and that's fine. But if he happens to be in Canada listening to this, I'm, I'm still willing and open. You have another film that you directed, uh, Plan B. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, yeah, it's out Friday, May 28th on Hulu. And I'm really excited about that. It was it's kind of crazy. It was a, a simultaneous directorial debut because they really did happen at the same time. Um, right before lockdown, right before everything got shut down, I was slated to direct this in March um, up in Syracuse. And uh, and then we got shut down right right before we started shooting like everybody else did. And so that's in the middle of the summer is when I made language lessons. And when I was editing language lessons is when I went back to Syracuse to go shoot this movie. Um, so I, I did them both at the same time, which is just crazy, but um, I'm really excited and proud about that movie as well. It's, it's, um, it's a, it's a, I've had a lot to be uh, proud and excited about this year. Yeah, well, you're just amazing. Like I said, you're in all my favorite TV shows and, and I just love seeing you, but I'm so, you're just such a talent behind the camera too. And my very last question is, what language would you want to learn if you could? Ooh, uh, easy, Japanese. That's a hard one. I, I always am like, I just, it just feels, I don't know, there's something kind of instinctual about it to me. I just really like whenever I hear it and it feels so beautiful. And I, I mean, it's hard because you have to learn an entire other alphabet, right? But I would love to learn Japanese. I'm sure you could tackle that too. <laughs> I hope so. Knowing you, your next movie will be in Japanese. <laughs> I, I bet. <laughs>
<laughs> Natalie, thank you so much for your time today. Best of luck with all of your, your films, everything coming out. And uh, like you. I said, I just loved, loved this movie. And thank you for the ending. It was perfect. Thank you. Oh, I'm happy you liked it. I loved it. Take care. And sorry <laughs> about the internet, but we're all good. All good. All good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.